Hey guys, it's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe, and I wanted to talk about Boarding House. This is the Blu-ray uh, two-disc edition, where the rent won't kill you, but something else will. I think this is the only version that came out, so I'm not really sure why I said two-disc edition, but this was a pretty much sought after, um, I don't want to say highly regarded, but at least underground movie that uh, a lot of people seem to enjoy that I saw posts about on Facebook and things. So I wanted to check this out. I ended up watching initially like a three hour director's cut on YouTube and I got about half through and I was like, I can't take three hours of this. But this doesn't have that cut on it. So this movie, I guess, has a bunch of cuts, which I found kind of interesting. This has three cuts. That cut I was talking about that's like three hours isn't on this set. So this was a 1982 film. This was distributed by AGFA or AGFA and Bleeding Skull. They do a lot of great work. They don't do as much restoration as they do preservation. So a lot of their stuff looks, you know, like it came from VHS or shot on video or whatever. And the quality isn't always great. So this one I thought was better than a lot of their other ones in terms of the visual quality. The audio is pretty good. It's fine. And there's subtitles, so that's always helpful. Um, I'm not going to be able to do much of a description myself for this movie. I can. However, the back of the box pretty much sums it up. Nothing can prepare you for the boarding house. Jim, who is the director, John Wintergate, a psychic gigolo who wears a leopard print thong, rents a haunted house to beautiful women with no ties. From there, the unworldly slasher transformed into a sleazy, hallucinogenic maelstrom of gore, sex, chainsaws, pie fights, killer refrigerators, jacuzzis, beds that eat people, a new wave band called 33 and a third, and a leading lady known only as Kalasu. Boarding House is the first shot on video horror film to be blown up to 35mm and released theatrically. Agfa and Bleeding Skull are thrilled to bring the 35mm theatrical cut to home video for the first time in this two disc set, which also includes Psycho Killer, a previously unreleased alternate home video cut, and Sally and Jess, the previously unreleased family film from the makers of Boarding House. So I looked up John Wintergate who created this. It seems like in the 70s, early 80s, him and his wife, who is Kalasu, I guess that's how you pronounce it, were like in a band, very artsy, you know, made movies, kind of had their, their hands in a lot of things. And this is him, his and her love child, so to speak. The, the disc has the theatrical cut, which I watched. It's uh, preserved in 2K from the original 35mm release print. A home video cut. A bunch of commentaries and interviews. And then there's, on the second disc, Psycho Killer, which is an alternative cut, which I haven't watched that or the home video cut. And then this movie, Sally and Jess, which people really seem to like on here. It's a family movie, but I'll get to that at the end. So after saying all that, it's a really strange, trippy movie, again, about this man who has this big house that, uh, at the beginning, they framed this out, so I'm not spoiling anything. There, were a, there was a double suicide at the house, and I believe it was uh, two parents and a daughter. The, the two parents killed themselves, and the daughter lived. She left or, you know, orphanage, or whatever the case may be, and this house eventually got sold and moved on, and John Wintergate's character, um, Jim, purchases the house. It, it's sort of like a weird vanity project, I think, in a sense, because he's walking around throughout the whole thing with his wiry frame in, again, these leopard print thongs or whatever, and he's surrounded by all these attractive women. Lots of them get naked, take showers, they have shower scenes, you know, water hits them and they're wearing no bra, so you have like a, you could see their chests. So it's, it's pretty funny that he like surrounded himself in this movie with all these really attractive women that are half naked. And his wife is in the movie, so she was obviously okay with all this. Um, it's not really a scary movie. It, it's a horror, but it's not really a scary movie. It's definitely trippy and weird. I wouldn't say like Mandy, but it definitely has like a sprinkle of that weirdness where you don't know what's really going on in the house. Uh, is there a person killing these people? They show these like weird special effects with like glowing colors. So you don't know, 
very trippy again. You don't know is like a ghost or some kind of phantom or something. And it does come together. My only real complaint about this film is at the very beginning and the very end, they give you, you know, the prologue and the epilogue in like computer text on the screen, which is fine. It like lays out the movie and whatever. But it, it's like every keystroke, beep, 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 beep. It's so annoying and it's not quick. So you're watching this three minute intro of computer text scroll on the screen with bam, 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 and it's very, very grating. So I wish they would have just changed that audio for the front and the back end to describe what happened after the movie and what went on before the film started, but it is what it is. It's a pretty fun movie. Again, if you like almost like a, I wouldn't say nonsensical, but a definite hallucinogenic, trippy, LSD weirdness, lots of, again, gratuitous nudity, and this dude walking around in his underwear. It's a pretty fun movie, and I do eventually intend to go back and watch the home video cut and then the Psycho Killer cut. I love when studios put out different cuts. I just recently reviewed uh, Phantom of the Mall, Eric's Revenge, and they have like four cuts on the, on the disc, and I think that's really cool. I like that you can pick which cut you want, some of them vary in quality, of course. They don't restore all of them. I guess this one, it looks like they just did the 2K on the theatrical cut, because that's probably the most accessible or well-known. Uh, the gore is pretty good. There's like eyeballs coming out and guts and people getting killed and stabbed. So it's definitely got the whole package. You just have to like your horror movies um, really kind of out there. Some people say it's nonsensical. I don't really think it's nonsensical. It's just not a lot is explained sometimes. So that's the gist of the movie. I do want to briefly just talk about the um, second film that is on disc two. And I love when they add free movies to these discs. So I buy a lot of them because I do like as well. This like, wow, it's a bonus movie and it's a blind buy kind of. Sally and Jess, a 1989 previously unreleased family film. I watched that last night with my wife because I thought she must like this movie better than Boarding House because she hates my cheesy horror films. I don't know. <laughs> Sally and Jess is about these kids whose parents pass away. I don't want to say too much because it's part of the, the movie and it's you know, fairly interesting. And they sort of, they go to an orphanage and they're about to get adopted by two separate families and they run off together and they go to the wilderness and in the woods. It almost reminds me of Wirehead on Sega CD, if you've played that, where every strange thing that could happen, like seeing bears or jumping in a, a boat down a lake, everything that can happen sort of does happen to these kids and they're getting hungry and they can't find food and they're trying to go after you know, rabbits and animals to, to cook. So there's like stuff like that. Someone's going after the, the, the girl at one point and the brother has to save her and that's the gist of the film. They're on the run, and the adoption agency is going after them to try and get them and adopt them out together now because I guess they realize they're missing, and that was the, their issue, as well as obviously their parents dying, so they're, they have this traumatic experience in their, in their childhood. It's an okay film. It sort of reminded me of like a, a film you'd watch in school, like something they'd show you maybe in like middle school to say, like, don't run away from your parents or don't want to run away from your home, like things aren't easy out there. Because, you know, everyone gets that grandi grandiose idea, grandiose, whatever, idea of, like, I'm going to run away and start a new life, and, you know, you think you know everything. And I think that they, they hone in on that. And it's shocking that this movie is done, again, by John Wintergate and his wife, because it's so drastically different from Boarding House. But if you like Boarding House, I would check out Sally and Jess, just because it's so drastically different. It's by the same people, and they are in it. It's like shocking that they, they did two of these films that are so different from one another. But I digress. Check out Boarding House. Again, it's it's very strange. Um, I do like it. I think that you have to be in that like blood beat type of mindset, but not as obscure. That's much weirder. And um, that you like seeing a bunch of nudity and gore and stuff, so that's cool. And that you don't mind that it's not pristine. You know, this isn't a normal, let's just say, vinegar syndrome release, though they did do a uh, slipcover for this release for them and you can buy it on their website or whatever but it's a cool movie it's I wouldn't say it's like one of my favorites but it's definitely one that's strange enough that I will go back to and probably notice more and take more in so 
take take that what you will. Let me know, guys, if you've seen Boarding House, what you thought, or if I've piqued your interest and maybe you're going to go out and check it out. It's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe. Be good.